All right, so today I'm going to introduce the uh, user interface for the Homer uh, Homer 2 uh, GUI. Uh, if you go to the documentation just to get a feel for what it looks like, you can actually come down and you'll see the uh, sample data sets. The only one that, ones that actually have to do with the Homer are going to be the sample data. The other three are actually all going to be involved with Atlas Viewer, which uh, I'll do a video for in the near future. Uh, I actually already have my Homer up. So here, and you'll actually see I have sample data here, and in my sample data you have examples. I went ahead and did the simple probe, and I think it's example one. But if you find your Homer 2 underscore UI, which I have right there, go ahead and run it. Typically it'll ask you for a processing stream. Uh, because I'm using some sample data, there's already an uploaded default uh, processing stream. If you want to use that, all you have to do when it asks for it is just hit cancel. If you already have one saved, go ahead and find it and load it up. But if you just want to use the default, go ahead and use the default, just hit, hit cancel. Uh, the three main things you're going to deal with, you have this main window here, which is going to show your data. This guy here shows us your pro shows your probe. Uh, basically, you have a 2D layout of your 3D probe. And in this case, it's a very simple uh, model that they use. Uh, if you want to actually show the data, you just click on any one of the channels, and as you can see, I can flip through it. If you want to click on multiple ones, just hold down Shift, and that'll actually allow you to click multiple ones. If you notice, I cl click twice on one of them, and you get this dotted line. What that means is that that channel will be excluded from the processing. If you want it to be re so you're not deleting it, it just won't be included in the process. If you want it to be re-included, just go ahead and click on it again. You can actually right-click. And if you right click, it'll actually obscure the channel from view. But from my understanding is it still is included in the processing. So if you just don't, if it's real messy and it's looking, it's taking up all your, your screen, you can't see anything else, go ahead and right click and it'll go away. To show it again, just right click again. Uh, over here you have your data. This options button actually allows you to view your processing stream right here. Uh, this is the default. Uh, if you hover over each individual piece, it gives you an idea of what it does. And it actually gives you a, an idea of what each of these little variables that you can change. Uh, you more than likely will want to change this. It, it'll depend on your data. If you don't want to change the actual uh, instructions, you probably want to change the, uh, the variable. If you do want to do that, just go to Tools, and you go to Processing Stream right here, and you get this layout. Uh, on the left, these are all your options. Here is the in, the output, excuse me. This is the name of the function, and this is the input. So it's just like you would write a function in MATLAB. You put the, the output first, the name, and then the input. If I want to add something into my processing stream, I just go ahead and click on whatever I want. I click Add. If you notice at the bottom here, you actually have a really good uh, general description of what it is. Uh, it may or may not answer your questions for it, uh, and I'll actually spend a little bit more time on each one of these functions later, uh, but it'll be a bit of an ordeal to get through them all. If I want to add multiple ones, uh, go ahead and just click Add, Add. I think I can actually hit, no, I can't hit Control. So you have to just add them individually. But if you want to adjust the uh, structure that they're in, so the, the, uh, the order, uh, you just highlight whichever one you want to move, and you click Up or Down, and it moves it in, in order. Uh, if you have one saved already, you can load it, and it'll pop up in here, and you can adjust it from here. Uh, you can also just save it. If you have one saved, aside from that, you can always just go to Load Processing Options right there. Um, once you do that, you'll come here, you'll click Run. Usually, you have to run the group, or sorry, the you have to run the run, and then the session, and then the group. But if I go to Run, it'll go through. It'll it'll process my my data here. And then at the bottom, you'll actually have the output. Uh, so initially, you have your raw data, and you have your two wavelengths, which are right here. Uh, you also have your, these would be your stimulus, but in this case, we, we only have one. Uh, typically, you'll have more than one stimulus. Once you process it, you'll have the option to view optical density uh, per wavelength, and it's also per channel. So if I were to click different channels here, do the same. Then I also have the option to click concentration. Usually concentration is going to be the thing that most people are interested in. And you have each species of, of hemoglobin, HBO, HBR, and HBT. You see as I changed it. And in this case, I can actually show you this, this view screen. You have Zoom. You have all, all your different uh, uh, 
uh, view options. So then you can actually zoom in using this, and then I can pan left and right here. And then I can just go to zoom reset, and I'm back. If I go to this waterfall feature, it's kind of interesting. It, it allows you to view the data a little bit more. I'll just put a one there, and you'll see the data itself starts to shift. And all it does is allow you to see each individual piece a little bit clearer. So it may be of use, it may not be. This I'll come back to in a later video. Down here, if you uh, reported any auxiliary data, you can plot that as well. Uh, here you have uh, oximetry, you have uh, blood pressure, resp respiration, and all that. Uh, finally, just to show you, you also have your stim GUI. If you do want to add in stimulus, these are just the auxiliary data. If I want to add in the stimulus separately, though, all I have to do is click. I get to pick which condition I want. So currently there's only one, and I can always add a new one. So let's add, I'll add one. There you go, it's nice and blue. If I want to add another one, I can add another one, and now they're related. But I can also add a new condition. I'll call it condition two. And that'll be a nice, pretty different color. Down here you can actually change the names. We'll call it blue, we can call it green, and we can call it blue. And you have that option to kind of play around with this. You can always hit save. Uh, you can rename the conditions through here. You can also add them on specific time points right here. But anyway, that's the general layout. I'll get to the, um, the output on another video. I'll get to a little bit more in depth on the processing stream and the stem GUI in another video, as well as this guy right here. So I hope that was of some use to you guys. And uh, I'll, have, I'll have more videos whenever I have time to get them up. But I hope that was helpful.